The vote was to decide who got into Congress, but the result has thrown a curveball into the race to become the next US president. Against most predictions, President Biden was today able to announce it had been a good night, while Donald Trump's standing was undermined as a pretender to his crown emerged. US correspondent Mitch McCann reports. It is still a nail biter. On a night Republicans predicted a red tsunami, Democrats in key states managed to stem the mega tide. I'm not really sure really what to say right now, my goodness. Neither were Republicans shocked they hadn't romped to victory in both the House and in the Senate. Definitely not a Republican wave, that's for darn sure. The Republican Party should have picked up a whole bunch of House seats. They will likely pick up enough seats in the House to win it, but far fewer than they had hoped for. The Senate could still go either way after Democrats managed to win some key races. Pennsylvania was the biggest, where John Fetterman defeated TV star Dr Oz. I never expected that we were going to turn these red counties blue, but we did what we needed to do. And what the president needed them to do with his administration on the line. Video from the White House shows a buoyant Biden ringing his troops. Hey buddy Joe Biden, congratulations, man. It's not over yet. Three states are still in play, and right now it's a dead heat. Georgia will go to a runoff in December, and that might decide who's won the Senate. It was a much darker night at Mar-a-Lago for a former resident of the White House. A number of Donald Trump endorsements failed, with suggestions his stardust has been blown away. This is a time that Donald Trump is no doubt in the rearview mirror. His political instincts are not about the party. They're not about the country. They're about him. Trump is still expected to announce a White House bid. That suggestion getting a wry smile from its current tenant. If there was any threat from within his own party of Donald Trump returning to the White House here in 2024, it might be from Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He's a rising star in the Republican Party, especially after last night. The 44-year-old right-wing governor guided Florida through hurricanes in recent months. DeSantis channeled Winston Churchill after winning 59% of the vote last night. We fight the woke in the schools. We fight the woke in the corporations. We will never, ever surrender to the woke mob. Florida is where woke goes to die. Tonight, votes are still being counted across America the day after the election. A country still waiting to see if it's headed left or right. Well, kia ora, Mitch. Joe Biden addressed his own future in the last couple of hours. Kia ora, Mike. Yes, he did. When he was speaking at the press conference this afternoon about the midterm elections, one of the reporters asked him, will you run for president again in 2024? Now, Joe Biden says it's his intention to run, but he'll make a decision with his family about that in the coming weeks and months. It won't be just his decision, but his wife's as well and their children. You have to remember, Joe Biden turns 80 years old this month. If he was to run successfully for the White House again, he would leave in 2028 at 86 years old. So he's getting on in age, and he's also got very low approval ratings at the moment. So there's a couple of things against Joe Biden. Then you have to ask, would he actually beat Donald Trump if he was to run again? And one of the latest polls here has Trump ahead by two percentage points. We don't know how he would go against Ron DeSantis, though. So plenty of unknowns for Joe Biden here at Washington at the moment. The first on the list, though, is the final midterm election results. U.S. correspondent Mitch McCann, live from Washington. Tēnā koe.